a cursory look around and we might be mistaken for thinking that Christmas had already arrived. I heard my first Christmas song on the wireless, on the radio for the modern people, um, on the 15th of November. And I always think the marker for me for Christmas songs is hearing two songs, hearing that Mariah Carey song uh, that she sings, and then hearing the Pogues uh, fairy tale of New York, the great two milestones, aren't they, in the journey of the Christmas song. What's interesting, if you speak to uh, Mrs. Alexa in the house, there's a, ch um, a channel called Heart Christmas Radio, and that began to play exclusively uh, Christmas music to your heart's content, you ready for this? On the 23rd of September, so rock and roll. The aisles, if you go shopping, have been full of Christmas things since Halloween is finished, at the very least. And I know even before then, if you've gone to some shops, some supermarkets, you go down that wacky aisle and you've got Halloween on one side and you've got Christmas on the other. There's that sort of conflict going on, even in the shopping um, malls. And I do know th uh, that in a fish and chip shop somewhere in Cambran, you're able now to buy deep fried battered pigs in blankets. Three for 150, I think is a bargain. <laughs> and I know that because I had a few this week. And I'm on commission, so I'll tell you where if you give me a fiver. The commercialization of the seasons means that there is now no longer any sense of waiting or expectation. Everything now is immediate. And I think this reflects something uh, with our society as well, and we were thinking and reflecting upon this only a few weeks ago, that immediacy, that instant media, instant news, even instant credit. I think, uh, and so, as sure as day follows night, all of us, I think, can put a tenner on a bet that by two days at the very maximum after Christmas, we'll see the first Easter eggs in the supermarkets. And I know because I kicked off in WH Smith's on the 27th of December last year um, about it. Advent, then, this season which we enter into today, which we begin, is something which is totally radical. Advent is something totally and utterly countercultural to the world in which we live in. It goes totally against the grain and against what society uh, puts forward, precisely because there is waiting involved. There is that expectation. And so for us, as people who live in the world, Advent then may have a tendency to sort of jar with us a bit, because just like that wacky eye where you've got Halloween one side, Christmas the other, even in our lives as we strive to, to, be, to live our Christian vocation, it can jar a bit. There can be that conflict going on. And so it's no surprise then that Advent brings with it a longing and an expectation which fundamentally challenges. Advent invites us then to take that step back, to recapture something that was lost, to recapture something of the waiting and that anticipation which has been lost due to that commercialization uh, of the seasons. Let us put aside our desire for that immediacy and let us look just for a moment to that empty stable at Bethlehem. The stage is set, but not quite yet. As we take us that step back to appreciate something of the waiting and the expectancy which Advent brings about, our readings today provide us with a deeper level. They go to the very core of the why question, a much deeper thing for us to meditate and reflect upon. What is the point 
in having to wait in the first place. Let us allow our Lord at the end of today's gospel to provide us with an answer. You too, he says, must stand ready because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. To be ready. Literally, from the Greek, to be prepared. And so to be ready then, as the gospel instructs, what we discover is be ready isn't the end point of our Advent journey. It's not the place where we are going to. We're not going to be ready. It's not the terminus. But rather it provides us with a new starting point. We don't get ready to go out, out, but don't go out, out, do we? If that makes any sense. It provides us with a, a, a new starting point, a springboard, if you like, into new intimacy, into that new relationship, that, that deeper level with the infant Christ child when we do arrive at our Christmas celebration. Advent gives each of us the chance to take that step back, to have the space in that waiting to fall in love again, to recognize that our journey to intimacy with Christ, our journey to discipleship, isn't that one-off event. It's not something that we've done a few years ago and we don't have to worry now, but it's something which continues to be ongoing, something which we continue to renew, to recapture, to re-establish that relationship time and time again. And of course, it's the same as any other relationship, isn't it, that we have. Any human relationship needs that working at. Today, we begin afresh our journey to Jesus. And the pathway to Jesus is offered to us. Indeed, the prophet Isaiah very helpfully provides us with that signpost that points us to Jesus. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. This new season of Advent, then, this new liturgical year, offers us the chance to choose that pathway that leads to Jesus. Perhaps for us to re-establish that covenant with him that has been perhaps broken or fractured for different reasons, to start again. As Christians, we cannot jump straight to the Christmas season. We cannot jump straight to the nativity because there's work to do. The opus day, the work of God. And that involves surrendering all of those other things in our lives that don't lead to Jesus. Not all of those pathways we have the opportunity to choose are always helpful and fruitful. Advent, I think, is probably one of my favorite seasons in the church's year because it has such a unique flavor, doesn't it? Unlike any other uh, season, it's beautifully unique. Don't be afraid to enter into its anticipation, to enter into that suspense, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it jars with us. That's when we know that the Holy Spirit is alive, is working with us. Let us confidently and faithfully, faithfully then stand ready, be prepared, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.